Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. I'm delighted to be with you here on this uh, very important and special occasion for Penn State. Our university has had a very long and successful tradition with this football program, one that uh, has contributed to Penn State in so many ways over many, many years. Our successes have been registered both on the field and in the classroom, and that's a fundamental value here at, uh, at Penn State. Our program requires a, a very special kind of leader uh, to continue those successes. Uh, a leader who is committed to academic excellence while coaching our students as they compete at the highest level. We have run a careful and deliberate search process and I believe we have found the right person to lead our program. He's an inspiring young leader who has accomplished much already in his career learning the ropes of coaching in both the collegiate and NFL ranks. He took his former program to a remarkable turnaround in a short period of time, competing in one of the toughest conferences in the country. I believe he will continue to build our Penn State football program while operating at the highest level of integrity. He values family and teamwork, which have been keys to his success. I personally look forward to working with him I want to thank the members of the search committee who were unanimous and enthusiastic in their recommendation. And I'd like to turn the podium over to Dr. Joyner, our athletic director. Thanks, Dr. Erickson. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I said uh, it would be days, not weeks, and uh, so it's one day, uh, one week and two days, uh, nine days, so, so they get that out of here so you guys are not going to ask me about that. Uh, I do want to say that. Uh, I'm extremely uh, proud to welcome uh, James Franklin as, uh, as our next uh, Penn State head football coach. Uh, we feel that uh, we had a great pool of candidates, and uh, Coach Franklin, though, is the, uh, the right choice for us. He's going to be a great representative of the, uh, uh, of the terms I use, uh, integrity, academics, and championships, and he brings that great foundation with him. From the great university, from the great Vanderbilt University, uh, here he's the next phase uh, with us at Penn State football, and he and his great family are going to be great members of, uh, of this community. Uh, this next phase, Penn State football, is built on a tremendous foundation of those that came before, and uh, and we're very much looking forward uh, to the future. Uh, and you're here to talk uh, about and to uh, Coach Franklin, and uh, I just want to welcome him again. And, uh, and welcome James Franklin and his family here to uh, Happy Valley. And uh, looking uh, forward to working with you very, very much, James. Thank you. I would, would like to start uh, by thanking uh, Vanderbilt University. I uh, had an unbelievable experience there. Um, today was an emotional day to be able to go there and say goodbye to our team. Um, that, was, that was a very emotional day saying bye to the 107 sons that we left back in Nashville. Um, David Williams, the athletic director, was a tremendous mentor and leader. Be forever grateful to him. Um, I'd like to introduce my, my family, uh, my wife, uh, Fumi, who's here, and our daughters, Shola and Addison, um, who uh, really run the show. Uh, Shola and Addison are, are the bosses. Um, you know, that, that's really what it's going to be about for us is family. You know. Um, now have two daughters and 95 new sons, and a lot of coaches say that, but we truly mean that. Um, you know, my daughters, their, their favorite thing in the world is the football boys and their uncles. My wife and uh, daughters will come to the football facility every day, uh, whether it's to have lunch with us or whether it's to come at the end of the uh, school day or work day. Um, I think that's very, very important. We work long hours. Uh, work extremely hard, but we've created a great environment uh, in our office. Um, all the coaches, uh, wives, and kids will come, uh, come around. I think that's very, very important to what we're doing in terms of um, helping young, young men uh, grow into successful leaders that are going to have an impact on society one day. See how they interact. For them to see how we interact with our wives, for them to see how we interact with our kids is a big part of that. So um, that's very, very important to what we're trying to do. So. At Penn State, I'll have two daughters and 95 sons, and every decision that we make in this program would be based on that. Honored to be joining a long line of great coaches with Bob Higgins, Rip Engel, 
the great Joe Paterno, uh, success with honor. The great Joe Paterno and success with honor. And then Bill O'Brien, a guy that I worked with at the University of Maryland who I have tremendous respect for, is going to be a great resource for me, a guy that I can call and, 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 and bounce questions off of. And I know he's going to do great things, and we wish him the best of luck. I'd like to thank President Erickson and our athletic director, Dr. Dave Joyner, who have been unbelievable through this whole experience. Um, I know you said it went quickly. It didn't really feel that way to me. Um, but we, we spent a lot of time talking about a lot of different subjects. Um, I felt like they conducted extremely thorough um, uh, interview. And I felt like I was able to ask a lot of different questions on a lot of different subjects and really, really appreciate how they handled the whole process with first class. Um, excited to come home. Uh, that's probably the thing that I take the most pride in is, is, is coming home. I'm a Pennsylvania boy with a Penn State heart and uh, so excited to be here. You know, my background growing up in, in Eastern PA, just outside of Philadelphia, uh, my dad is from Pittsburgh. So I would spend all my summers and uh, holidays in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. My, um, my dad was from uh, the Hill District, Bedford Avenue. I grew up in, in, uh, just outside of Philadelphia in Langhorn, Pennsylvania. Uh, Pennsylvania boy with a Penn State heart and, and couldn't be more proud. And I think I'm the right guy to come back and unite this state. Unite this state and bring this program back to where I think it can be. Our academic philosophy. You know, I believe in the true student athlete the true student athlete. And this is a place where a young man can have it all. He can get a world-class education. He can play football at the very, very highest level and reach all of his dreams. And to me, you know, that's, why, that's why we made this decision. Um, it was an easy decision. We weren't going to leave Vanderbilt. We worked very, very hard to build something that we could be proud for. Had all, all types of success in the classroom, had all types of success on the football field. But we felt like this was a special opportunity an opportunity where we could walk into a young man's home and offer, offer the best of everything, an opportunity to get a great education, an opportunity to, to play for championships. And that's what we're all about. World-class academics, true student athletes, and unrivaled football tradition, unrivaled football tradition. To walk out into that stadium just a few minutes ago and, and see one of the world-class facilities um, it is unbelievable to me. I remember I came to camp here when I was in 11th grade, and uh, you know, Coach Caldwell was the quarterback's coach. And I thought I was good enough to play at Penn State. I was not. Um, ended up having a great experience in college, but to walk out in that stadium is just an unbelievable feeling, an unbelievable experience. Um, and so proud to be the next head football coach here at Penn State University. Our recruiting philosophy, we are going to dominate the state. We are going to dominate the state. We are going to dominate the region. I worked a lot of different institutions that tried to compete uh, recruiting against, against Penn State University, and it was always an unbelievable challenge because uh, this school has everything that young men are looking for. This, this school has everything that families are looking for. So uh, that, that is going to be our plan, and I'm calling all the high school coaches. I'm calling all the people in the state that we need to come together like, no, like never before. And I think with everybody pulling the rope in the same direction, there's no reason why we can't take this program where everybody wants it to be. We should take great pride in representing the state of Pennsylvania. We, we should take great pride in being able the ability to play for Penn State University. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We are going to unite the coaches. We are going to unite, unite the community. And we're going to build this program where everybody wants it to be. Everybody wants it to be. That, that's, that's what I'm going to leave you with, is I can't tell you how proud that myself and my family are to be here and the rest of the coaches that are going to be joining us to represent this fine institution and to build a program that everybody can be really proud of, both on and off the field. That's the fans. That's the alumni. That's everybody that cares about Penn State University. We're going to work extremely hard to put a product both on the field and off that everybody can be truly, truly proud of. Can't tell you how, how excited we are to be here. And, uh, and my name is James Franklin, the next head football coach at Penn State University, and I couldn't be more proud to represent everybody here. Thank you. Okay, questions, please raise your hand. James, Mark Brennan of Fight on State. Hey, Mark, how are you? You're in a job that Joe Paterno held for 45 years and Bill O'Brien held for two years. 
what's kind of your vision of what this job will be to you and how long you intend? I, I guess that's a loaded question, but in terms of your career, how do you view this uh, in terms of your state? Yeah, you know, I, I'm a kid who played Division II football. I'm a blue collar guy that had to work my way up the ladder to get in this position. If you look at my resume, it probably does not, uh, is not a probably great example of who I am. I uh, lived in nine different states and countries in my first nine years to get to this position. Um, you know, I, I'd still be at Vanderbilt right now if it wasn't just such an unbelievable opportunity. So, you know, we're coming here with the mindset that we're going to build this program, we're going to build it the right way, and we're going to build it for the long haul. And uh, we, we plan on being here for a very, very long time. This is my dream job. This is, this is where I want to be. Um, wearing these colors, representing this state, representing these high school coaches and the people of the fine state of Pennsylvania is what I want to do for a very, very long time. So, uh, you know, our plan is to go out and win a bunch of games so we can stay here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, James, Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer. Hey, Joe. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Um, I, obviously, it seemed like you had your, uh, a number of opportunities to change jobs uh, in the press anyway. Um, and this job comes with uh, the fact that the president is going to be stepping down on June 30th, if not before, and, may bring, and a new president may bring with him a new athletic director. Uh, what consideration did you take into those facts before, as you made your, up, up your mind to take this job? Again, we had great dialogue, and we talked about everything. You know, um, I was completely upfront and honest with all my concerns and things that I was excited about. They were completely upfront and honest about all their concerns and things that they were excited about. We had great dialogue on multiple occasions, not only in person, but over the phone. Um, you know, and that was a concern. That was a concern. But I think with the right plan and the right people and the discussions that we had, um, you know, what I was sold on and what I believe is that, that, that Penn State has a, has, a, has a plan and has a purpose and has a, a certain type of individual that they want to bring here and that they're that, that are going to be attracted to this institution so um, hopefully we're in a position where we're able to have these conversations for a very long time um, but the the plan was and the discussion was that that Penn State is going to attract the best and the brightest and people with the same values so uh, that that's what made me very very comfortable Coach Todd Fox, 43 in Harrisburg. hi Todd how are you good Yeah, I, I was very interested right from the beginning. Um, you know, when I heard about the opportunity and I heard about the opening, um, you know, obviously, you know, there was some contact from that point on, um, and we, we started to get into discussions. Um, it, you know, it's kind of it's very difficult because you have a job and you have a responsibility, and, and we had a game to play, um, but. We try to keep our focus on that, um, control the things that we can control, and, and if an opportunity presents itself to sit down and have a discussion about this job in the future once the season was over, then we were going to do that. Um, luckily, we were able to do that, and I'm fortunate to be sitting here today as the next head football coach at Penn State University. Coach, Jerry Fisher, WBLF Radio. Question for you. Have Hi, you Jerry. Had a chance? How are you, Jerry? I'm doing good, thanks. I like have your you? head. I was, yeah, it's a good look. <laughs> Someone, someone saw me talking to Dr. Joyner today and asked if I was you, and I said, obviously, no, that's not the case. But the question is, it's, everything's happened so quickly. Have you had a chance to think about staff? Have you had a chance to think about Ron Vander Linden or Larry Johnson or any of the former coaches or your staff that you may bring with you? Yeah, I, I have. You know, I'm a guy that for the last 12 years has, has been creating a staff. You know, I have list of receiver coaches and tight end coaches and offensive coordinator and defensive coordinators um, for the right job and the right fit and the right setting, making sure that we're always prepared. Um, that's something that you're going to find uh, from me is we're going to work very, very hard at being prepared for every situation that may come up. Um, I am fiercely loyal as a person in general, um, and I'm going to be fiercely loyal to the guys that I've worked with in the past. But I also know that you know we're going to sit down and, and, and have some discussions with some people that are here. I think there's some people that can help us in the transition, uh, guys that have strong Penn State ties, guys that understand this place. And although we had a plan that was very effective at Vanderbilt, 
you also better have a plan that's specific to that institution. And when you have people that have a history and understand the place, they can help with that. So I'm looking forward to getting a chance to sit down with the coaches as well as some of the administration and put together the very best staff that we possibly can put together for Penn State University. James Willie Jungle Center County Report right here in the middle. Um, given the fact that a coach has just left the NFL from this job and there was rampant speculation that you would be having interviews with uh, National Football League teams, what is it about the collegiate game that you enjoy the most? Yeah, I, I had a great experience in my time in the NFL. I think it was something that was very important in my development. There's no doubt about it. But I'm a college guy. I'm a relationship guy. You guys are going to... You guys are going to ask me what our offensive philosophy and defensive philosophy and special teams philosophy is. Um, I really don't care. You know, to me, it's about people. I love kids. Um, you're not going to find a coach that cares more about their players than me and their complete development, you know, academically, athletically, socially, spiritually, the whole package. And that's what drives me. Um, you know, I didn't grow up saying I wanted to be a football coach. I got my undergraduate degree in psychology. I wanted to get my doctorate in psychiatry or, or psychology um, and started to coach the game of football as a graduate assistant to get it paid for and realized that I could have just as much of an impact on people and kids' lives through the game of football uh, than through psychology or psychiatry and caught the bug. And um, you know, that, that's what it's all about for me. That's why it was so difficult in leaving Vanderbilt because those kids were my family. And um, you know, that's what we're going to build here. James. Pat Principe with Pat, how are you? TV, good in Lancaster. My hair resembles more your president, so. Uh, have you had any dialogue with current Penn State players? If not, when will you and what will your message be to them? Yeah, it is going to be a sprint uh, from here on out, and that's uh, talking to the players, the current players. That's going to be contacting recruits. That's going to be contacting uh, former players. Um, that's going to be contacting influential supporters of the program and, and, and of the university. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do in a very, very short period of time. And it's time sensitive because of the recruiting process as well. So um, you know, basically when we leave here, uh, probably till 2 o'clock in the morning, and then we'll be back up at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning getting going again. Um, luckily, I'm fortunate I'm not a guy that needs a whole lot of sleep. Uh, my wife does. Um, uh, we, we always have those discussions. You know, she's amazed that I can get by on five hours of sleep. That, that's just kind of who I am. So um, the interesting thing with this job is you got to wear a lot of hats. And every job is important. You know, connecting with the former players, recruiting, um, developing relationships on campus. I think it's one of the best things that we did when we first got to Vanderbilt is, you know, I went around and took every dean, the provost, vice chancellors out to lunch. And I plan on doing the same thing here. You know, taking everybody that I can on this campus out to lunch and getting to know them and asking them questions and what can we do better and what are areas that you think I need to be aware of. Same thing in the community, reaching out as much as you possibly can. Um, you know, I had a unique experience with the Green Bay Packers in the NFL, but that was kind of like a college program because it's amazing how that organization is so connected to the community. And that's what I love about college football. So me and my wife and my children, we, we will be out in this community. We will not turn down a speaking engagement. We're going to get out. We're going to interact with people. Um, you know, people ask us to come speak at schools. We're going to be there. People ask us to come speak at social events. We'll be there. People ask us to come and blow up balloons at their kid's birthday party in the backyard. We'll do that as well. Uh, we're going to do everything we possibly can to, to bring this community back together, um, to really, really take pride in this program and where we're going and how we're doing it. Um, and couldn't, can't get more excited. As much as I love this press conference, uh, I really can't wait for it to end so we can run out of here and get to work. Uh, James. Hey, it's uh, Mark Dent. James, where are you? Yeah, right here. I'm Mark Dent with the Post-Gazette. Hi, James. How are you? Uh, it's Mark. That's oh, it. I'm sorry, Mark. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Uh, so when you were growing up here in Pennsylvania, were you actually like a Penn State fan growing up? Did you go to games, things like that? And uh, I know you mentioned how you, you went to the camp or whatever. Did you even get like as much as a questionnaire ever from Penn State or, or any kind of look? Whatsoever. I, I think I printed my own questionnaire off and filled it out and sent it in. Uh, they weren't sending them to me. Uh, but yeah, I, I think you know, everybody in the state grows up as, as a Penn State fan. Um, didn't come to games. You know, you know, grew up in a real blue-collar uh, family and 
Um, you know, we, did, we didn't come to Penn State football games. I was playing. You know, I was playing football games. I was out playing basketball. I was running around with my buddies in the neighborhood uh, competing. You know, um, you know, something that these kids don't really understand. They're sitting in the air conditioning, playing video games all day. You know, we were out running the streets, playing basketball, competing. And, um, uh, but, yeah, grew up a Penn State fan. Uh, always dreamed of this opportunity. And uh, it's funny, me and my wife were talking about in the ride over here, and we discussed this, you know, when, when we first started dating about my dream jobs, and my answer to her was, was Penn State. You know, I didn't know um, if I'd ever have the opportunity because I didn't think the guy that was coaching when I was growing up would, would ever leave. Um, you know, so uh, uh, very, very proud, very, very proud to have this opportunity. James, Ken Brown, I witness sports in Wilkes-Barre. I can. Uh, you talked about realizing your passion for coaching early on in your career uh, at schools like East Stroudsburg and in the PSAC. Uh, talk about getting from there to here now. Well, the other thing I'd like to mention is I think that's exciting. You know, the fact that I went to East Stroudsburg University, which has historically been a phys ed teacher's college. And all my buddies are out, you know, coaching throughout the state. All my teammates and buddies are coaching throughout the state. Um, I think that's going to be a tremendous resource for us, as well as the PSAC in general. Um, again, you know, I was, a, I was a Division II guy that's had to work for everything he's got in his profession. Um, but I've had great experience and I've had a chance to work for a bunch of really good guys. You know, Denny Dowd's my college coach. I think he's been there 48 years, uh, you know, uh, something that I'm going to try to challenge him with. Um, you know, my quarterback's coach, Mike Twilliger, I think has been there 27 or 8 years. My college roommate, Mike Santello, has been there, I think, 12, 13 years. Um, I, I think, you know, being around people like that, obviously, you know, working for Ralph Regan and, and Mike Sherman and, um, you know, that experience and all the great people I worked with at Vanderbilt, um, I've been able to steal great things from everybody I've worked for. Um, I'd like to mention Debbie Yao, uh, who's been an unbelievable mentor to me. Um, to this day, I can still pick up the phone and call Debbie Yao, you know, one of the most respected athletic directors in the country. Um, you know, so I, I've been fortunate to be around some great people and been able to steal things that I felt were uh, tremendous characteristics, leadership characteristics that fit my personality. Um, and that's been, that's been integral to, to my success. Coach John Stro, WHBL TV, State College. John, how are you? Hey, since you brought it up, Offensive, defensive philosophy. You've got a pretty talented team, especially with a high, with a great quarterback. How excited will you be? You know, spring ball being a ways off, but how excited will you be to get these guys out on the field and you know see see what you got and start installing your offense and defense? Can you give us a little peek into what that might look like? Very excited, um, uh, very excited. But we've got a lot of work to do between now and spring ball. But very excited to get out there. I know they're anxious as well to get playbooks, to get video, to all those things. Um, it, what I would say is, you know, we're going to run multiple pro-style offense, defense, and special teams. Um, you know, to me, I'm not a guy that's going to pigeonhole uh, what we're going to do. I think, you know, my philosophy is you go out and you hire really, really smart people, and you have a system that has flexibility to take advantage of all your strengths and hide your weaknesses. I think that's what we all try to do in whatever organization or whatever business you're in. You play to your strengths and you hide your weaknesses. Um, and that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. You know, I don't believe that one offense or one defense or one special team's philosophy is the end-all, be-all. It's about taking advantage of the, of the assets you have. And that's what we're going to do. But we'll be pro-style, multiple pro-style offense, defense, and special teams. We'll be aggressive in everything we do. When we get off the bus, we're going to be aggressive. Uh, the way we call the game, we're going to be aggressive. Um, I, I think that's very, very important. I think the fans want to see an exciting style of, of defense. I think the fans want to see an exciting style of offense and special teams. We're going to take calculated risks. We're going to have fun. Uh, and it always helps to have a quarterback. I don't care whether it's little league, high school, um, college, or the NFL. If you've got a quarterback, you've got a chance. And we feel very, very good about the quarterback we have in our program right now. James. Um in the center here. Sir, how are Dave you? Dave Jones from the uh, Harrisburg Page Dave. News. Um, this place, you know the history of this place the last couple of years. It's been, it's been tough. It's been really rigorous and tough for everybody. I'm sure what happened last summer at Vanderbilt came up during the interview process. Yes, sir. Can you enlighten us at all of, of what was asked of you uh, with, with the rape case and how you responded? 
to your interviewers? Yeah. Couldn't have been a more thorough um, interview process. Uh, we discussed everything. And um, the most challenging thing that I've ever been through, uh, personally, as a father of two daughters and professionally, um, but what I think that came out through all this, through, through their background checks and, and all the information that they got, is that we were honest, we were upfront, um, that we made decisions quickly um, and tried to do everything we possibly could to respect the situation with the utmost class um, and also work hard at, 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 at supporting the young men that we have in our program, currently on our roster and in our program right now. Um, but, it, but it could not have been a more thorough conversation um, that we could have about it. I might, uh, I might add to that that uh, this whole process of vetting uh, was probably uh, maybe the most thorough vetting process of, uh, of any, any search, uh, perhaps uh, of any position uh, at this university. And, uh, and we utilized multiple uh, independent third party sources. Uh, we, uh, we used uh, uh, contacts and people that knew uh, James uh, closely, including uh, officials and administrators from Vanderbilt, including uh, AD. Uh, uh, you know Deb Yao, who gave a resounding, uh, a resounding uh, uh, positive uh, on James and his character, and uh, and how he uh, approaches situations, and, and and her feelings after working with him and knowing him for 17 years, uh, and so uh, it it, uh, it it couldn't have been a more thorough vetting process uh, with our committee, which is an extremely diverse committee, as you know. Uh, and uh, with people that asked hard questions and got, uh, got honest and, and true answers. And so uh, my belief, without a doubt, is that James Franklin is, an extremely, is, a, is a man of extremely high character that uh, when presented with a terrible situation, and God forbid, I wish we never had occasion to learn about James Franklin and how he would handle something like that, but having said that, the way he handled that situation, and this has to do with the collective of everything that, that, that we went through, plus our in, in, uh, uh, interviews, uh, discussions with our athletics integrity officer, with counsel, uh, with everybody there. He answered every question uh, forthrightly and with, uh, with great honesty. And so uh, through this whole vetting process, I couldn't be more confident uh, in the character of this man sitting to my left and the fact that we have somebody that uh, when presented with it, and hopefully will never be presented with a situation like that again. But uh, I have extreme confidence that uh, he will handle that situation with great class and honor and do the right thing. Yeah, so. Coach, Chris Pickle from Fight on State and Penn Live right here in front of you. You've recruited against Penn State, and you talk a lot about relationships and people, which ties right into recruiting. In what areas of the country would you like to see, would you like to really get into uh, in terms of Penn State recruiting, and how has recruiting against Penn State helped you now recruit for it? Yeah, well, first, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but we are going to dominate the state. That, that's, that's the first thing that we're going to do. Uh, I believe in the high school coaches in the state. I know how well they're coached and developed. Um, I know how talented this state is as well. I know how important football is here. I think that's very, very important. So that, that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to work very, very hard. We're going to put a staff together that's going to help us dominate the state of Pennsylvania. Then obviously be able to, 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 be able to recruit aggressively in this region as well. You know, um, New Jersey, uh, obviously Pennsylvania, uh, New York, New England. Um, you know, Virginia, Delaware has been very good to, to Penn State traditionally. Um, I, I think also we were going to take a national approach by position. We will do that as well. So everybody will have recruiting areas. Everybody will be in the state. Every one of our staff members will have an area of the state. Then we'll also have areas in the region, the states that surround Pennsylvania. And then we'll recruit nationally as well because I think you sell yourself short when you don't do that. You know, we could have a, a Penn State alumni in California um, whose, whose son always grew up wanting to go to, to, to go to Penn State. So having the ability to recruit nationally so that we're aware of where all the great players are in this country, I think that's important. But, but our team uh, will be comprised and mainly made up by, by Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania young men. James, Chris Adamski of the Pittsburgh Tribune Review. Chris, how are you? Um, well, everybody knows you coached with your predecessor on the same staff in Maryland. Um, I read somewhere you guys were friends. Have you kept a relationship through all this time? And then especially 
this past week and maybe the leading couple of weeks leading up here, you, you're going to be bounce some things off him and maybe find some things out. Yeah, me and Billy were on the same staff. We kind of uh, were brought up in this profession um, under Ralph Region. You know, Billy was with him at, at the, uh, excuse me, at Georgia Tech, and I was with him at the University of Maryland, and we were able to get back together at the University of Maryland. Uh, me and Billy lived in the same neighborhood. Uh, Colleen and, and my wife are, are good friends. They've spoke this week about the most important thing, which is school districts and, and houses. Um, I think uh, I think Billy and Colleen are, are, are they think they're slick. I think they're really just trying to get us to buy their house. But um, <laughs> but um, you know, but they're a great resource for us. There's no doubt about it. We know each other very well. He's got a big job to do. I have a big job to do. So I don't want to I don't want to uh, spend too much time bothering him. But it is a tremendous resource for us. James over here, Dan Kovacevic, Pittsburgh Tribune. Hey, when you say you're going to dominate the state, which I believe you said about four times uh, today, and you also mentioned having Pittsburgh roots, there's obviously one other college, major college program in the state. Could what you're saying right now be interpreted as kind of throwing down the gauntlet to Pitt? Uh, obviously, Penn State hasn't been as active in Western Pennsylvania as it was in the past. Well, I, I have tremendous respect uh, for Pittsburgh. Uh, for the University of Pittsburgh. Tremendous respect for their coach, tr tremendous respect for, for their university. But um, when, when I say Pennsylvania, and when I say Penn State, that's the whole state. That's the whole state. So we will recruit every corner of this state, every school of this state, uh, every neighborhood of this state. And when I say recruit, not, not only just mean the student athletes, I mean the people of the great state of Pennsylvania. We will recruit everybody. Um, and that's with tremendous respect for the University of, of, of Pittsburgh. But we are Penn State. James, I'm Travis Johnson with the Center Daily Times here in town. Uh, you said that today it's been very emotional for you, but can you kind of describe how, what your emotions have been like throughout this entire process, when you realized this would be a legit opportunity for you, and kind of what it meant for Vanderbilt to kind of push back and, and, and the AD make the public comments that he wanted to and what that meant? Well, um, you know, again, I'm a relationship-based person. Um, you know, so our, our, the way we interact with our players, the reason we've been successful at Vanderbilt is because we have unbelievable chemistry on our staff and with our players. And that's why we'll be successful here as well, because these kids will know how much we care about them. And I believe you can be unbelievably challenging and demanding on people if you love them hard as well. And, and that's, that's what we're about. Um, so. With that, uh, it's hard to walk away from something that, that you poured your heart into, you know, that you poured your heart into. Um, those kids, um, some of them might be a little uh, disappointed or angry right, angry right now, and that's natural. That's natural. But being able to walk into that room today and do it the right way and talk to them face to face and let them know how much I care about them and how I want to see them all go on and do wonderful things um, in their communities, in the classroom, and on the field. Um, I hope they understand that I'll always be a part of their life, um, do anything I possibly can to help them. And um, that, that's, that's what this program is going to be based on as well. It's about relationships and treating people the right way. Uh, James, uh, Josh Moyer, ESPN, Penn State. Hey, Josh. Uh, when's the last time you, you were at Penn State? And what was it like uh, earlier on stepping off that plane and being greeted by, by a few Penn State fans? Last time I was here, um, I was a recruiter at the uh, University of Maryland. Uh, at that point, you were allowed to have a, um, a Nike combines. You were allowed to go out and actually you know, be at those. They've changed those rules. That was the last time I was here. Um, before that, obviously, when I was trying out to try to be the quarterback, and I got rejected um, from Coach Caldwell. But um, you know, stepping off that plane today was unbelievable. Uh, the fans and the media at the airport got a chance to walk over and, and meet two beautiful young women uh, by the fence and be able to shake their hands, uh, young ladies, um, and, and just, you know, the sense of pride in this place. I think, I think that's the biggest thing is, you know, we were really able to establish a sense of pride at Vanderbilt with, that, with those kids and with that program. Uh, but to step off the plane today and meet the people and walk around the facilities and see everybody that shows up here today, um, you know, it's special. And it's probably even more special being a Pennsylvania kid. And like I mentioned before, a Pennsylvania kid with a Penn State heart with the same values and the same morals.
James, Corey Geiger from the Altoona Mirror. Hi, Corey. Have you had much contact at all with Larry Johnson? W would he be somebody you might reach out to to remain on the staff? And also Ron Vanderland, and you, you've had a working relationship with him as well. Would he be a potential staff member? Yeah, they are both guys, obviously, that we're going to have discussions with. You know, Ron gave me my first opportunity, my first big opportunity at the University of Maryland. I uh, was there with him for one year. Um, um, you know, Larry, I uh, knew Larry very well because he recruited the Maryland, D.C. area and, and had a lot of success, and we, we've known each other through that. Um, so, yeah, uh, like I mentioned before, we're going to sit down and we're going to talk to current coaches. Uh, we're going to talk to coaches that have Penn State ties. Um, again, like I mentioned before, I'm fiercely loyal to the guys that, that were at Vanderbilt with me. And if you look at that staff, it's a, it's a Northeast staff. I remember when we first went there, you know, people said you, you didn't hire anybody with SEC ties. Um, and um, I went out and hired a bunch of really, really smart guys that I believe in and that I've known for a very, very long time. So I think a lot of those guys are going to be a great fit here as well. But, you know, my job uh, and my responsibility is to put the best staff together that I possibly can for Penn State University. And that's what we'll start doing uh, you know, as, soon as, I, as soon as I can get out of here. So if you want me to start working on you, just stop asking questions and I'll, I'll get out of here. Coach, uh, Philip Zamore from the Altoona Mirror. Uh, the, the previous staff had almost filled its allotted uh, scholarships uh, before, they, before they left. How will your approach be with the, the kids that have already verbally committed for the 2014 class? Yeah, we're going to reach out to those guys right away. Um, one of the things that's kind of unique and interesting is a lot of those guys that we had recruited in the past, so have a relationship with some of those guys already. Same thing with the guys on the current roster. Um, guys that, you know, uh, since they turned me down last time, they're going to be at the bottom of the depth chart uh, and have to work <laughs> their way back up. Um, but, um, you know, I, I think the fact that I'm from this area and have a lot of connections, I think that's going to help in the transition. High school coaches that I already have relationships with and they know the type of man I am and, and, and what we represent, um, I think those things are going to help. But, yeah, I, I need to get on the phone with these people as soon as we possibly can. Uh, I think there is still some scholarships available, and we want to make sure we maximize those as well. Um, I really wish that we had 35 scholarships in this class because I think we could put together one of the top recruiting classes in the country. Um, but I guarantee you those are coming. Those are coming. Uh, we, just, we just got too many things to sell here at this great institution. We got too many things to sell that families and young men are looking for. James, Rich Scarcella from the Reading Eagle. Hi, Rich. James, when did you become interested in coaching? When did you set that as a career? You said you majored in psychology at, at Strasburg. Yep. And, and who have been your biggest coaching influences? Yeah, I, um, I took a job working at Kutztown, uh, made $1,200, uh, filled soda machines up in the morning. I remember the players used to be walking around campus, and they'd make fun of me, filling the soda machines up on campus. I lived in a guy by the name of Joe Ludwig's basement. Um, and, uh, and caught the bug, uh, caught the bug of coaching and, you know, um, ended up going back to East Stroudsburg. Um, actually, actually, I coached at, at Kutztown for six months and then I went over and, and played in Europe, uh, did that for six months and then went back to uh, East Stroudsburg as a graduate assistant. Um, so it, it just kind of built from there. Like I mentioned before, you know, uh, taking classes and wanting to get my degree and that was very important to me to get my master's degree. Um, was actually close to continuing on and getting my Ph.D. at Washington State. Um, but I just I caught the bug and um, I've had a lot of influences. You know, um, Debbie Yao, the athletic director at NC State, David Williams, those two guys will be mentors and friends uh, for the rest of my life. Um, Ralph Friesian had a huge impact on me. You know, when I worked for Ralph, Ralph was in Sports Illustrated as the number one mind in college football. And I remember saying to him, you know, you know, Ralph, everybody says you're a genius. And he goes, I'm not a genius. I just out-prepare people. And that had, a, that had a big impact on me. The time that I spent in the, in the NFL uh, with the Green Bay Packers and Mike Sherman had a big impact for, on me. Uh, going to Kansas State and taking over for a legend in Bill Snyder, uh, who still was involved in the program and I met with and still stay in contact with, with uh, had a big impact on me. Um, you know, Denny Dowds. Who, uh, who the consistency that he's brought to that program and the consistency of his message uh, is something that always hit home with me. So I, I, I'm a guy that's always writing things down. I read a lot of books, whether they're business books, whether they're the leadership books. 
um, whether they're sports books. So I'm constantly trying to grab information, things that I think that can help our program, that can help our kids. Um, um, so that, that's what we're constantly trying to do as an organization. Coach Patrick Wu, first of all, it's good to see you again. Patrick, how are you? I'm doing well. Great to see you. Um, Coach, at Vanderbilt, you had to rally the fans to show up to the games. At Penn State, you don't have to do that. You're going to have at least 90,000 people in that stadium. What would you what, think? What does the stadium hold? 107,000. Is there a reason why you said 90,000? That's when it's at its worst, Coach, but I know you're going to bring it back up. Yeah, 107,000 every single game from here on out. That so, stadium will be sold out every single game from here on out. That's what everybody wants to hear, Coach. So what will you feel when you see that? And also, can you describe to us where your work ethic comes from? Um, walking into a stadium that is sold out and is passionate. Everybody talks about the impact that it has on recruits, and it has a tremendous impact on recruits. When you're a 17, 18-year-old kid, it's hard not to be affected by that. But same as coaches. You know, I got a bunch of coaches that have been calling me all day. Um, from this morning until now, I have 278 text messages on my phone. That's from friends. That's people that are excited about this opportunity. That's about people that want an opportunity to come join us here. Um, you know, Penn State's a special place, and there's only a handful of Penn States um, in this country. And um, an opportunity to coach here is such a tremendous honor that I take so much pride in. And we're going to wake up every single morning, do a backhand spring out of bed, excited about the opportunity to represent this great institution. Um, my work ethic comes from my mom. You know, I was, you know, my dad was in the Air Force, was stationed in Manchester, England, met my mom. Uh, they eloped to Ireland, got married, then he brought her back uh, to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. My dad ended up getting a job uh, working for GM in Trent, Trent, New Jersey, so we moved just outside of Philadelphia. Um, dad wasn't around a whole lot after that, and, and my mom in this country without any support system raised me and my sister. Um, had a lot of jobs. She was a janitor at my high school, and I just saw how much she invested in her children. You know, I was raised by nothing but women. Uh, women had a huge impact in my life. You know, my, um, my aunts um, on my dad's side, uh, my aunt Luanda is the assistant dean in engineering school at Howard. Um, you know, I've been raised by powerful, intelligent, strong women my entire life. Um, so um, my mom has had the biggest impact on me, uh, the type of my, man I am, the work ethic, and to this day, I still wake up trying to make her proud. James Neil Riddell from the Alton and Amir. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, wondering where you see uh, over the last couple of years the healing process uh, of this university and what role you, you see yourself uh, in that. And also unrelated, had you ever met uh, Joe along the way? Yeah, every chance I got, whether it's the convention, and I saw Joe, I, I, I was that guy that walked up and introduced myself. Uh, I remember recruiting um, in the state of Pennsylvania against Joe, and I thought we were doing pretty good. Um, you know, I walked in and, you know, had to show my ID and do everything I possibly could to get into the school, and Joe walked in. They shut the entire school down. They had an in-school assembly, um, and I realized I had no chance. I really had no chance. Um, but, you know, the healing process is why I'm here. You know, it's why we're all here to bring this great university back together and try to unite the former players, the current players, the alumni, all the people. Because I, th I think that's the reality is, is everybody just takes great pride in this university and they want to see it great in everything, academically, athletically, socially, spiritually, the whole package. Um, and, and I know that I'm a guy that believes that as well. And I believe I'm here for that. So we're going to work very, very hard in not only developing our student athletes in this football program, but also trying to reach out and connect with, with all the people that take such pride in this great university. James, Kevin Cooney from the Bucks County Courier Times. Bucks County Courier Times. That's yes. a great newspaper. Please buy a subscription. <laughs> <laughs> kind of following up on, on Neil's question. Um, Bill, despite his success here the last couple of years, was, was hounded a lot by a certain wing of the community who always looked at it through kind of the glasses of what would Joe have done. And he expressed his frustration the day uh, that he wrote about in, in January. How, do you, how are you prepared to handle kind of the second guessing that may come 
from that wing with this job? Well, well, first of all, tremendous respect for Joe Paterno and what he did here and how he built this program. Um, I, I think that the biggest thing is what I said before, is that everybody is so passionate and has such strong opinions because they care so much about this university and what it stands for. And I think the fact that they have someone sitting in this role right now that cares as just as much cares just as much about it as they do, I think is important. Um, I've gotten a bunch of great phone calls in the last you know week. You know, Matt Millen has reached out and has been great and been really really supportive. Has given me really good insight. Lavar Arrington has been great. Um, you know, as soon as he found out that my family, my dad's fa side of the family is from the Hill. Uh, we connected right away and had great conversation. Uh, Todd Blackledge had a great chance to sit down and visit with him, obviously doing the ESPN National Championship game. Uh, you know, he pulled me to the side and we had a chance to have really, really good conversation. And then last trip, me and my wife went on the Nike trip and developed a really good relationship with Sue Paterno. And Sue reached out and sent a great email to my wife as well. So uh, I, I think that's, that's what everybody's looking for, is they just want a great university, they just want a great football program. They want to do it with honor. They want to do it the right way. And, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to, to take this university and bring it back together and unite it so that we can all just be so, so proud of everything that it stands for, both on and off the field. James, Audrey Snyder with the Harris, Harrisburg Patriot News in the middle. Hi, Audrey. Uh, hello. You mentioned a little bit earlier about some of your initial concerns with this job regarding you know, the leadership, the uncertainty there. You also mentioned the uh, scholarship limitations. There's still a bowl ban on the table as well. What were your discussions? Did that come up during the interview process as well? And what are some maybe the other concerns that, as you try and sell this program? Yeah, we, we did discuss that. Again, you know, they couldn't have been more open and honest and thorough. Um, I couldn't have been more open and honest and thorough. But, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to wake up every single day and we're going to maximize that day, both, you know, academically, athletically, socially, and spiritually. We're going to wake up every single day and attack that day. We're going to focus on the things that we can control, the things that we can control. I'm going to leave those things up to the, the administration. I'm going to leave those things up to the politicians, and I'm just going to coach and love these kids in this program um, and, and help them develop into the young men that they want to be. Um, and th that's our focus. Focus on the things that we can control, work hard every single day to develop the best student athletes that we possibly can, to develop the best football program that we possibly can, and be a really, really positive part of this community. I think that's, that's the thing that we look at. You know, we, we, we're coming here to win football games. We're coming here to win football games. But we know, ultimately, we're here to graduate players and educate kids. But the thing that probably excites us the most is the opportunity to make a positive impact on this community. And when I say this community, I'm talking about you know, State College, but I'm also talking about the state of Pennsylvania and this region. And I think you know, Penn State has the ability to touch so many people in such a positive way. And that's what we want to do. I, I, two more. I need to just interject something for James that Audrey, the 107,000 thing, Audrey uh, makes it her life to count every seat, every ticket, and every. So I just wanted you to know that she's a great person, but I just wanted you to be aware that she counts a lot. Yeah. Wonderful. Exactly. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, two more. Coach Barry Leonard back here from Victory Bell Rings. Uh, could you wave back? back hey, Barry. Here, sorry. How are you? Hi. Good, thank you. Getting back to your statement about recruiting, um, can we take that as an intention to uh, strike heart into the fear of Coach Meyer, who's considered the top recruiter in the conference right now? You can take it as a guy that is passionate about being at Penn State. You can take it as a guy that takes tremendous pride in the high school players from the state. You can take it as a guy that, takes, uh, that has the utmost respect for the high school coaches in the state. And what we're going to do is we're going to get everybody to understand that if we all buy in to what Penn State is all about, and everybody's pulling the rope in the same direction, and everybody says if we stay home, that we got a chance to build something very special, and then accent those young men that stay home with some talent from surrounding areas and nationally, that the sky's the limit for us. So we're just going to focus on Penn State. We're going to focus on how great that we can be. 
uh, by waking up every single morning and maximizing that day. So again, we're going to focus on us. And by focusing on us, we're going to be able to reach our dreams. James, uh, here in the back, Jacob Calker, WTAJ TV here at State College. Um, How are you, sir? Good. How are you? Awesome. I know you said you want to focus on yourself. Best day of my life. <laughs> I, I can understand that. Um, but you came from I'm sorry, third best day of my life. See, I'm the eyes, the eyes. I haven't reached that point yet, so I, I, just got, I, I would this would be yeah, my best day, but I haven't reached that point yet. So uh, I guess you, you mentioned wanting to focus on yourself, but you know, coming from the SEC, such a tough conference, now in the Big Ten East, you talk about coaches Urban Meyer, Mark D'Antonio, Brady Hoke at Michigan yourself. How about that challenge of what that top level of competition maybe means to you? Yeah, tremendous respects, respect for those coaches, tremendous respect for those institutions. I have tremendous respect for the conference that I just left. Um, and I think, you know, what a, what a better way to get prepared. What a better way to get prepared to come here and, and compete at the very, very highest level um, and, and be excited for the challenges that that presents. Um, but I believe, I believe in the history of this institution. I believe in the core values of this institution the integrity, the character that this place is all about. Um, and, and I believe, I believe in everything that this place is about and where it's going. So uh, you know, we're excited for those challenges on the field. We're excited for those challenges um, in recruiting. And we're excited to be able to look at graduation rates and everything else. You know, we're going to compete in everything we do. Our four core values will be have a positive attitude. Every single person associated with our program will have a great attitude and will be very, very appreciative of the opportunity that they have at Penn State. You know, number two, we're going to work extremely hard. You know, there's not going to be a program or a coach in the country that is going to outwork us. Number three, we're going to compete in everything we do, starting in the classroom. We're going to compete in everything we do. And then the fourth thing is our guys and everybody in our program are going to know that you've got to sacrifice. You got to sac sacrifice things that the common man won't sacrifice to get where you want to go in life. And there are four core values, and we're going to live by them every single day. Guys, thank you so much for being here today. We had an unbelievable first experience. We still got a lot left on our plate. I look forward to getting to know everybody um, uh, on a more personal level. And uh, once again, I can't tell you how proud I am to be your football coach and to represent everybody in the great state of Pennsylvania and to be a part of Penn State University. We are Penn State.